During the Korean War, it was the site of numerous dogfights between UN fighter pilots and their opponents from North Korea and the People's Republic of China. Soviet-built Miko Yungurovich MiG-15 were the aircraft used during most of the conflict, and the area's nickname was derived from them. It was the site of the first large-scale jet versus jet air battles, with the North American F-86 Sabre. MiGs enter the scene. The North Koreans began their war against South Korea on June 25, 1950 with small numbers of Soviet aircraft retained from the Second World War. These were flown by under-trained and inexperienced pilots. Once the UN, led by the United States, committed its air power to the war, the North Korean force was rapidly depleted. For several months U.S. Built B-29S, P-51 Mustangs and the early jet F-80 Shooting Stars and F-84 Thunderjets flew the skies over North Korea virtually unopposed. While the North Koreans and their Soviet and Chinese advisers argued behind the scenes over the best course of counteraction to take, by October 1950 the Soviet Union agreed to provide their air regiments to the conflict. Equipped with high-performance MiG-15 fighters along with their Soviet air crews and maintenance teams. At the same time the Kremlin committed to supply the Chinese and North Koreans with MiG-15 aircraft, and would train Chinese and Korean pilots to fly them. The first encounters between Soviet MiGs and UN. Soviet pilot First Lieutenant Fire Dorch is shot down and killed American pilot Aaron Abercrombie. Later that day three MiG-15s attacked about 10 American F-80C fighters, with the F-80C of American pilot Frank Van Sickle shot down. Soviet pilot First Lieutenant Semen Jarmanik was the first pilot in history to be credited with a jet versus jet kill. One week later, November 9, 1950, the Soviets suffered their first MiG loss when Lieutenant Commander William T. Our men shot down and killed Captain Mijil Grachev. In response to North Korea's deployment of jets, P-51 squadrons from the UN Air Forces converted to jet fighters. The F-86 in the case of USAF and South African Air Force and the Gloucester Meteor by the Royal Australian Air Force. April 12, 1951 was nicknamed Black Thursday by USAF pilots after three MiG-15 squadrons with 30 aircraft attacked three squadrons of B-29 Superfortress. Bombers protected by about a hundred F-80 Shooting Star and F-84 Thunderjet fighters. The MiGs were fast enough to fly past the non-swept wing escorts and engage the B-29S. Three B-29S were shot down and seven more were damaged, with no casualties on the Soviet side. Following this U.S. sorties over Korea were halted for approximately three months. U.S. Bomber Command was forced to discontinue daylight attacks on Korea, and change to night missions using small groups of bomber aircraft. Secrecy. The Soviets kept the participation of their air crews in the Korean War secret for many years, though it was widely suspected by UN forces. Soviet aircraft were adorned with North Korean or Chinese markings and pilots wore either North Korean uniforms or civilian clothes to disguise their origins. For radio communication, they were given cards with common Korean words for various flying terms spelled out phonetically in Cyrillic characters. These subterfuges did not long survive the fury of air-to-air -air combat, however, and pilots were soon heard communicating in Russian. Soviet MiG-15 regiments were based on Chinese fields in Manchuria, where, according to existing UN rules of engagement, they could not be attacked. Many Soviet regiments underwent preliminary training at Soviet bases in the neighboring Soviet Maritime Military District. Soviet air defense troops also began to arrive along the Yalu, setting up radar installations, ground control centers, searchlights and large numbers of anti-aircraft guns to deter any attacks on the Chinese airfields. While UN pilots chafed at the restrictions imposed on attacking the MiG's Chinese airfields, it wasn't known until many years later that the MiG pilots themselves operated under tight restrictions.
to preserve the impression that Soviet pilots were not fighting in Korea. They were prohibited from flying over non-communist controlled territory or within 30 to 50 miles of the Allied front lines. One Soviet pilot who was shot down in UN-controlled territory shot himself with his pistol rather than be taken captive. Another pilot who bailed out into the Yellow Sea was strafed to prevent him from being captured. Soviet pilots were not allowed to pursue UN aircraft over the UN-controlled Yellow Sea. In spite of the restrictions, many U.S. pilots took advantage of a hot pursuit, exception to flying over China to pursue MiGs across the Yalu River. Later, hot pursuit became active MiG hunting over Manchuria, with U.S. pilots maintaining a code of silence about the patrols. Flight leaders chose wingmen who would keep quiet, and many rolls of incriminating gun camera footage mysteriously disappeared. Better source needed, the UN conducted Operation Mula to entice communist pilots, especially Russian pilots, to defect to South Korea with a MiG-15. The operation was intended to gain an analysis of the MiG-15's flight performance as well as serve a psychological purpose undermining the Soviet pilots. With the end of the Cold War, Soviet participation in the Korean War became widely recognized as pilots who participated in the conflict revealed their role. Legacy The MiG Ali battles produced many fighter aces. The top aces were Russian. Nikolai Suchiagin claimed 21 kills, including 9 F-86S, 1 F-84 and 1 Gloucester Meteor in less than 7 months. His first kill was the F-86A of Robert H. Lyre on 19 June 1951, and his last was on the 11th of January 1952, when he shot down and killed Seal M. Reeves, who was flying an F-86E. Other famous Soviet aces include Yevgeny G. Pepeliyev, who was credited with 19 kills, and Lev Kirillovich Shukin, who was credited with 17 kills, despite being shot down twice himself. However, Soviet kill claims were highly exaggerated, based upon inherent flaws in their film grading procedures. For instance, the S-13 gun camera was not aligned with either the gun sight or either cannon's ballistics. It ran only while the firing buttons were depressed. Film graders commonly included unit commanders and political commissars who would confirm a kill, sometimes even if one had not been claimed by a pilot, when the camera's crosshairs touched the target for two movie frames. During the first 16 months of combat Soviet VVS units claimed 218 F-86S destroyed when only 36 had been lost. This results in a 600% inflation rate in victory credits over actual sabers destroyed. A thorough individual review of USAF Korean War F-86 loss records results in the conclusion that 224 Fifth Air Force sabers were lost during the conflict. 47 pilots were killed, 65 listed as missing and 26 captured, with another 6 wounded but able to return to friendly territory. Of the 224 F-86s lost, 40 were in non-operation accidents, 61 to non-enemy causes during operation sorties, 18 to AAA and 1 to an enemy bombing attack. This leaves a maximum of 104 lost as a result of aerial combat. Soviet archival records state that 335 MiG-15s and 120 pilots were lost in Korea, with 319 of these aircraft and 110 pilots being shot down in combat. All but 10 of the downed MiGs fell to F-86S. The PLAAF admits the loss of 399 aircraft in Korea, of which 224 MiGs were destroyed in combat, all exclusively by the Sabre, with the loss of 77 pilots. The North Korean losses are not yet known with certainty, but in 1953 a defector estimated that KPAF MiG losses numbered at least 100 jets. Overall then, during the course of the conflict approximately 566 MiG-15s had been destroyed by Sabres.
Of all these, only 49 were flown by members of the two elite VVS divisions that fought over the Yalu primarily during 1951. Accepting USAF losses as above, this generates an overall kill ratio of 5.835 MiG-15s destroyed for each Sabre lost. However, against the Soviets' best, the Krak 303rd and 324th IADs, the ratio nears parity at 1.4-TO-1. Interestingly, when the 324th IAD was flying the early model MiG, the kill ratio was 8 to 1 in favor of the F-86A. Once the MiG-15 bis was used, it dropped to 1.2-TO-1, indicating that the two variants, and the men flying them, were nearly equal in capabilities. The aerial battles of 1951 in terms of kill ratio alone were essentially a draw. But against the other Soviet, Chinese and Korean MiG divisions, the F-86A EF reigned supreme with a kill ratio of 9.07 to 1. The top UN ace of the war, Captain Joseph C. McConnell, claimed 16 MiGs, including three on one day. His story featured in a film called The McConnell Story, starring Alan Ladd and June Allison. The second highest scoring UN ace, Marge James Jabara, was the first UN jet versus jet ace. Another ace, Frederick C. James P. Hagerstrom, claimed 8.5 kills. George Andrew Davis, Jr., became one of the first members of the new U.S. Air Force to receive the Medal of Honor after being killed while leading his section of two F-86S against 12 MiG-15s when he was trying to shoot them all down. Over 30 Sabre pilots were claimed to have been shot down behind enemy lines and their fate has never been definitively established. Surviving pilots, captured and later repatriated after the armistice, reported being interrogated by Koreans, Russians, and Chinese. For years after the Korean War ended in 1953, rumors persisted of pilots held captive by the Soviets. A number of computer video games based on the combat in MiG Alley have been produced, amongst in MiG Alley Ace, released by Microprose in 1985.